I've already tested the bullseye, so how about testing the Hero Me fan duct? On my original Ender 3, I ran a Petspang V2, and very recently I tested a ring vent and the bullseye cooling solutions. While I was posting that video, one of my patrons suggested the Hero Me fan duct, and then a bunch of people commented the same thing. So here is a video on exactly that. In case you didn't see it, the bullseye is by the same authors as the Petsbang, but designed for the stock 4010 fan duct. I designed a torture test, printing with the standard configuration to get a baseline, compared it to a ring duct, which I found had pretty much no improvement. Fortunately, when I tested the bullseye, I found that bridging improved and that I could print with overhangs almost all the way up to 80 degrees. So that brings us to the Hero Me. It's a less mature design, it hasn't been through anywhere near as many iterations, but you'd have to say the documentation is still pretty nice. There's pictures of how the air is expected to flow, as well as step-by-step -step pictures for installation. Now I had previously intended to include my Tebow Tornado in this comparison as well. With the larger 0.8mm nozzle I fitted, I found that the stock 4010 cooling fan did not flow sufficiently to have much impact. I printed a set in gold for the 5015 larger fan, but unfortunately with the FADA heatsink on the Tebow Tornado, I found it the hard way when I tried to install that it just wasn't going to fit. Now one of the downsides of the Hero Me is that it's not that straightforward to print. After some trial and error, this is how I ended up orientating it, but as you can see, it needs a lot of support material. This is the case for either the 4010 design or the 5015 design. Try not to be as silly as me and print it at ABS temperatures with PLA because everything will be melted and fused together permanently. After you do have a successful print, it's time to remove all of the support material. It probably took me about 20 to 30 minutes per set of parts that I printed and I had to very carefully clean up everything so it could fit together. I'd highly recommend at this stage getting a bolt and turning it in to cut the thread in the main body to make it much easier later on during installation. Once you finish cleaning up, start by removing all of the previous cooling parts and then install it as follows. We start by sliding the body piece down from the top, being careful not to catch the wires. The right hand side has a hook built in and then you can see the left two holes will line up with the two bolts. After that, we put on the fan using M3 bolts. Should be able to use the factory ones that came with the printer. Check that the fan is secure and then you can put on the blanking plate that covers the two bolts and put in those two bolts. This blanking plate is only for use if you're not running any type of auto bed leveling. If you are, we're going to cover that in a little bit. But once you put in these two bolts, the thing should be rock solid. It shouldn't wobble in the slightest. I also printed a BL touch mount because I have one of those fitted to the printer, but it's temporarily held out of the way. The offset is in the file name and they cover a range of sensors, including the Easy ABL also. There is a guide to use a cable tie with to hold the wiring out of the way. That's one of the nice things about this. You'll need to make sure that the wiring is tucked to the side neatly because you won't be able to proceed until then. There is a channel inbuilt to help you with this. The actual cooling duct, in this case, a 4010 version slides up from underneath and there are two bolts on the side. Hopefully you've already cut the thread with a bolt before fitting them because it's gonna be mega tricky to do while it's on. Before tightening completely, slide them so the ducts are pointing either side of the nozzle, not too high, or you'll cool the nozzle instead of the print. And after that, you can put it in the fan on the side. The 4010 simply slots from the top and two of the M2 bolts are recycled to hold that in place. Just for comparison, the 5015 fan that I was gonna use on my TiVo also slots in from the top. However, it uses a notch instead of bolts to secure it. We finished fitting all the parts, but before we print anything, we're gonna slide the water dish underneath and compare the airflow of this fan compared to the other designs that I've already tested. A quick recap, there is so much air leaking through to the bottom from the hot end cooling fan that the part cooling fan is difficult to tell when it's activated. When we fitted the bullseye, however, there was still some air leaking through, but as soon as you turn on the part cooling fan, it was much more obvious and it was directed nicely underneath the nozzle. Same here on the Hero Me. As soon as you turn it on, there is a depression directly underneath the nozzle and you can tell that it's much better placed than the stock fan. Time for some printing tests. Here's my torture test. The link for this is in the description below. The whole base is a wide bridge and then we've got these four towers, one in each direction that go up to an 80 degree overhang and a skinny central pyre in the middle. I once again ran the exact same G-code as the previous test to make sure that it's fair and I'd just like to point out how pretty the blue is of this X3D blue filament. Well our torture test is printed and the results are extremely similar to the bullseye design. 
When you look from the top, although we're using the same G code, you'd be hard pressed to know any change of parts had occurred, even down to these tiny little loops and imperfections. When we start to look from underneath, we can see that bridging performance is on par with the bullseye. When we flip underneath again, we can confirm that as well as see that all of the overhangs are good up to about 75 degrees. So therefore, like the bullseye, this is a worthwhile upgrade. However, the stock fan is pretty good unless you're gonna be doing some pretty extreme things. Having said that, a lot of the time modifying the printer is half the fun. So if you're looking for a cooling fan, this one will get the job done. So what are the point of differences between this one and the bullseye? Well, in my opinion, there's two. Firstly, it's a lot more compact and I particularly like the cable management because everything is hidden underneath the fan on the side. Secondly, unlike the bullseye, there are two versions here for both the stock 4010 fan or the 5015 fan, so it is upgradable later on without having to reprint the whole thing again. That's going to wrap it up for this video. Please comment below. Have you printed this one? Have you printed the bullseye? Which one is your favorite? Are there any other ones that you think I should test in the same way? Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you like the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.